today's video I'm going to do a brief review of Atherin Genesis GP40-2L in the Iowa Northern Railroad paint scheme road number 4002. I'm going to do some talking while I do the unboxing of this locomotive about the Iowa Northern Railroad. Uh, this is a standard Atherin Genesis package and if you've watched any of their videos you know what they look like when they're unboxed but I'm going to talk you through some of the details. So the Iowa Northern is a small regional railroad, operates mostly in eastern Iowa, it runs from Manly, Iowa to Cedar Rapids, Iowa where the headquarters are located. And for those of you that know me know that I typically model Illinois Central, Illinois Central Gulf, the occasional Chicago Central if they're produced. And um, so this is actually one of the not only non-Illinois Central, Chicago Central locomotives that I actually have purchased. And the reason why I purchased this particular locomotive, it doesn't go with the era of my layout. I'm usually I'm modeling more in the 1980s. Iowa Northern Railway was, Railway was founded in 1984, but I live near Waterloo, Iowa. And there is a major yard and engine facility in Waterloo. And I see this railroad operate pretty much on a daily basis when I'm going to and from work. So, I wanted to pick this up. Unless you're from Iowa, you more than likely do not have any knowledge of the Iowa Northern Railway, so I'll talk a little bit about that here. And, uh, you know, this is my local railroad, so I wanted to purchase this since there are very few pieces of locomotive and rolling stock that are produced in this paint scheme. So, the EMD GP40 originally was one of the uh, more popular locomotives produced. It's been in production. For multiple decades now, it evolved into the GP40-2s, which are much uh, more user-friendly. They had a lot of upgrades to the electronics and, and some of the servicing components of it. And eventually, one of the bigger purchasers of the GP40-2s was the Canadian National Railway Corporation. And you can see on this particular unit, it has what well, a lot of people call the Canadian cab, the Canadian safety cab. Some people call it the North American Comfort Cab, but it has the wide, um, the wide cab. So they were typically classified as GP40-2s, and in parentheses W, that signifies the wide, uh, wide cab. So the Iowa Northern Railway purchased three GP40-2Ls, and I'll get to the L in just a second, from Canadian National and then they repainted them into the Iowa Northern Railway's colors and if you you know you pay a lot of attention this paint scheme uh, very much looks like uh, the Canadian Pacific with the maroon color the gray and then the yellow so what made the differences between the uh, GP40-2Ws and the 2Ls the L stands for a lightweight frame and through some research on the prototype the frame itself actually sits prototypically three inches higher on the L's than it did on the W's. So, you know, if you think about that, three, three prototype inches difference, and if you put that down to scale differences, that's three eighty-sevenths of an inch difference between the frame height of the, the dash two L's versus the standard dash two W's. And Atherin has other videos out there that actually show they have modeled that prototypically and, and visibly when you put a 2L versus a 2W, the 2L sits just a little bit higher than the 2W. You know, another one of the spotting feature differences for the 2Ls versus the 2Ws is there's actually a little bit more of a gap between the gas tank and the frame. It's hard to see in this video and again we're talking 3 87ths of an inch. That That's different but um, nevertheless we still you know, the Atherin modeled that correctly. So just real brief, some of the features on this to make this model unique. Um, Iowa Northern purchased three of these from Canadian National. And I want to say kudos to Atherin for even producing this particular locomotive since there's only three prototypes in existence. Road number 4001, 4002, and 4003. You know, again, we just don't see this offered very often in, in a HO scale model, especially at a Genesis level. So a couple things I just want to real brief highlight. You can kind of see very brief, very small here up in the uh, 
just uh, on either side of the number boards there are the actual marker lights these are non-functioning marker lights headlight let me zoom out here just a little bit ditch lights I'm gonna fire this up here in a second so you can see the lighting features intact cab mounted bell you can see that there are two Sinclair antennas on the roof and then there's an airline that goes back to the horn let me zoom out just a little bit more you can see there's the horn back there another spotting feature on the two or I'm sorry the dash twos versus the original GP40s there's a sight window on the long hood um, this is an earlier version of the uh, dash two so there's chicken wire uh, grills very prototypical spotting feature three radiator fans this this model does not have dynamic brakes some of the uh, GP40-2s did have dynamic brakes on them very highly detailed uh, I'm gonna here's a couple pictures of the actual prototype I took these photos myself just a few weeks ago out uh, at the Bryant yard on the south side of Waterloo I mean, Ather nailed it. Um, granted, there's only three prototypes that they can go off of, but you can see the the conspicuity markers are true to the prototype. The warning uh, markers on the doors are true to the prototype location. Another spotting feature that that's a dead giveaway that this is a former Canadian National um, unit. It has a single light on the on the rear of the long hood, and that was very typical of the Canadian um, versions. Ditch lights on the back. We'll show those here in a second. Some uh, spare couplers on the back plow. Cut levers. Uh, you know, again, highly detailed Atherin Genesis model. Just gonna very slowly pull this through the camera for you, so you can see some of the details and some of the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get a test track set up here and we'll take this for a brief sound demonstration. I do want to say that the Atherin suggest, uh, manufacturer suggested retail price for the sound unit is $269.98. I just purchased this from our local hobby shop for $215 and no cents. So shop around, you can certainly get a good deal on these. Um, and again, I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully this gets some attention to the Iowa Northern Railway Company for having Atherin produce this particular locomotive. Okay, I have it set up on my test track here and we're just going to run very quickly through some of the sound features on this. I got about uh, 18 inches of straight track here so I won't be able to do a full demonstration of the all of the Tsunami 2 features. I do have some other videos that, that show some of those. But let's sit back and listen as I apply track power. I'm just going to run through these here. F0 should be the headlight. Sorry, I had it in reverse. F0 is the headlight. Couldn't figure out why it wouldn't come on. It was in reverse. So, 0 is the headlight, 1 is the bell, 2 is the horn. Three is short horn. Four is unassigned on this model. Five are the ditch lights. And when you blow the horn with this model, the ditch lights alternate. Seven is a dimmer see the headlight dim there a little bit. I, I apologize, it's not very dark in this room. F8 mutes. 
F9 is half volume, which I love. I've said this before and I say it again. These Atherin products come out of the package loud, very loud. F10 is still one of the coolest features I think these guys have. It's the straight to eight, so you can hit it. It's gonna notch the engine up to full RPM, so let's listen to that. And then F10 again releases it. And then here's just the rear view. Um, again, one single light headlight in the back on the long hood, two ditch lights that are functioning, and then the rear ditch lights do not alternate when you blow the horn, give a little power here.